So some have wondered if I, uh, basically, because I guess there was a, a post on the EEV blog that said that the iPod Touch 5th generation, last year's version actually, didn't work with the Flare 1 iPhone 5 5S version. Now, I mean, I understand skepticism. Uh, I could easily jailbreak an iPhone 5 and tell it to say iPod in the corner. Of course, I didn't. So, video speaks louder than than words. I could have bought a newer generation one to use with an Android phone or with an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus or whatever the case is. Um, but I'm on a budget and in trying to meet a budget, well, this does just as well and actually has a longer battery life. Actually, this will outlast the iPod Touch, so an iPhone 5 would probably be a better match as far as battery life goes. But here's proof that this is an iPod, and this is the sixth generation, the current generation. It has to run a processor that's a 64-bit processor, meaning the A7 or A8. The iPhone 5 has the A7 processor, Turns out the 6th generation iPod Touch actually has the A8, so it runs the same processor that the iPhone 6 does. And because it runs the same processor that the iPhone 6 does, it does a magnificent job as far as processing. I mean, we're only doing 9 frames a second here with the uh, 9 hertz capture, but it has no problem with recording video and everything. And the nice thing about this, unlike, let's say, modifying the flare by dremeling out some of the corners and there's even a, a case you can 3d print a clamp for an iphone 6 so you can still clamp and hold the top of the iphone 6 in place if you dremel down these corners and notch these down that will work as well if you have a 3d printer and you choose to go that route it'll work with a much bigger screen the way i look at it is right now i have a bigger screen than most of the flare guns do at a fraction of the cost uh, I purchased this for about 130 off of tequipment.net after a discount code and they did have it on sale around Christmas time or Cyber Monday. They had it down for $99. In fact, I even found one used locally on Craigslist going for about $90. Um, unfortunately, that, that sale got held up otherwise I would have gone that route. And I would have gladly have modified this to show the other techniques of adding different ones to it. The problem is, since I did purchase this new, I like the idea of the manufacturer warranty being the first version out there. And I'm not going to modify this. And I'm just going to use simply the iPod Touch that I received as a gift. And we'll run it this way. And it will work just as good. Now the nice thing is with Flare Tools, you can actually use Flare Tools and you can actually sync Flare tools to your Dropbox. So therefore, you can now take these smaller images and smaller videos and import them into your Flare tools using your Dropbox. Very simply, it will actually tell you, you know, do you want to import all of them since the last import, the last day, the last week? It gives you a nice little different options. It's really nice uh, in that matter. You can now basically use flare tools to take the images you use Dropbox here and you simply upload the images uh, into your Dropbox and you use flare tools to import them into the flare tools app and you can import them onto your iPad you can import them onto your Android phone for bigger screen modifying editing as you can see I have my flare tools running on the Android here and I was able to import the videos and the pictures, oh, that's the wrong video. Oop, let's get out of here. Okay, I'm not used to Android that much. There we go. So this is a panoramic, so it's actually showing both views. But you can, or you can import from Dropbox using Flare Tools and your Dropbox connection. You can import to your Mac or your Windows PC. Now to make the iPod Touch fit nicer in the iPhone 5 5S case. I used a slightly thicker cardboard stock from a shipping envelope that was just 
you know, thicker than like five or six sheets of paper I put together. And then I ended up adding two sheets of paper to it just to fill in that last little gap. So yeah, there's a little bit of a cardboard stock here. The nice thing about using the iPod Touch though, is once you get that correct buffer distance in there with that cardboard and that paper stock, you still have the flash perfectly positioned where it's meant to be. There's no having to play with the alignment of plugging it into the lightning port. Just simply put it in, you're clipped in, you're done, and your flash is still visible. So you can still use your flash along with assisting for the MS, what is it, the MSX technology, I think it's called. Um, so this way you can see more detail in what you're capturing. I think it's called MSX or MSX. I don't recall the actual lettering and, and the verbiage and the way it's supposed to go, but uh, let's go ahead and launch the Flare One app. Turn on the Flare One version one for the iPhone 5.5s. Get prompted for its calibration, of course. Hold down the button. And there you have it. You can actually see the studs in the walls there. Works very well. Leaves the handprint very well. And of course, I really should give the Flare 1 version 1 a little bit time to warm up. Once it warms up with firmware 1.0.11, it really does a decent job of not prompting so often for recalibration but you have to give it that time to warm up I guess the sensor needs to warm up is what I pretty much see and we can lock it back down so there it is the flare one version one on the iPod touch sixth generation now there's also other alternatives like I've mentioned you could notch out to fit an iPhone 6 or 6 plus 6s plus or whatever it is um, there's a gentleman out there that actually has a video. He basically epoxied a neodymium magnet in this part of the case here on the Flare 1 and then taped a razor blade to the inside of his leather case for his iPhone 6 or 6S Plus, I think it is, and basically lined up the magnet with the razor blade he taped inside the leather case so this way after removing this clamp this piece here that's used with their case that comes with it for the iphone 5 or the 5s you can just simply plug it in and the magnet lines up with the steel and once oops you see i kind of forgot to press down on that there we go clip that back in the magnet lines up with the steel and helps hold the phone in so it doesn't you know fall off the same basic purpose that this little clamp does that is in here that already has that function um, but if you decide to go with the iPod touch 6 gen the buttons line up perfectly the flash lines up good and even the headphone jack lines up so not an issue with any of those functions along with using your flare one version one on it and there you have it and that is the 6 gen proof or the proof of the ipod touch 6 gen running on a flare one version one and without any problems it's been running very well